Welcome back to another Pisco tutorial. In this video, we'll look at the Lighten and also the Dithering tool, and we'll also explore some of the different options we have over here in the Transform panel. So to get started, I'm just going to select the Circle tool. I'll left click and hold. and I'm just going to create sort of a circle character here, and then I'll grab the Pen tool and just left click and hold to create two eyes and a very simple mouth. And if I don't like that mouth exactly, I can just right click to erase certain parts of it till I get the mouth shape that I want. And now I'll go into the uh, paint bucket tool and I'll choose a color for this character and we'll just click. And so now I have this character and now we can explore this lighten tool. So if we click on it, um, it's actually lighten and darken. By default, it's lighten. So if I go hover over to a pixel, I can click on that pixel and it'll make it just a little bit lighter. It's kind of hard to see here. I can use the scroll wheel in to look at it. But now you see this pixel is noticeably lighter. The more I click on it, the lighter it becomes. So we, we can see we can turn this pixel completely white if we want to. I've clicked on it like about 12 times. I can do Control Z to undo that and just set it back to how it was. And notice the color changes too over here in our palette section. It changes to that lighter color gray. So I can hit Control Z to undo that. Uh, there we go. Uh, we can also darken a pixel by uh, holding down the Control key. If we looked here, uh, we see if we hold down the Control key, and we click, we can't darken darker than a completely black pixel, but we can darken these blue ones. And this is nice, like under the eyes here, we might want to click a couple times and just sort of darken these a little bit. And we can create some dark pixels. And what it does, it just creates uh, more of a, it gives it a little bit more uh, depth, this, you know, and we might do some, sh so it's almost like creating a shadow. So we could just come over here and pick the color and choose that color, but this is a very easy way you can just uh, quickly uh, use this tool lightening and darkening to lighten and darken pixels. Now something else we can do is this dithering. What dithering does, if we just have our pen size set to one, it's going to every other pixel, it's going to draw in the secondary color. So if I click right now and left click and hold and move, we see every other pixel is becoming filled in and it's sort of a checker pattern like this. So every pixel I go over, it'll apply the secondary color. So to illustrate this, if I change the secondary color to red, now every other pixel will be red. And this may not look super useful at first when you're zoomed in like this, but as you zoom out, you'll notice this actually happens quite a bit uh, to create, it's almost like um, transparency. Sometimes transparency may not be supported uh, in however you're using this sprite or this uh, artwork. Uh, and also, it just creates sort of a merge between these colors. You might be using only 16 colors. And so you can create uh, a better example might be to choose, uh, we can go to our color picker, and I can right click on this blue. So now the blue is both the primary and the secondary, this light blue. And I can create more of a darker version here. And now when I do dithering, we'll start to see a difference here. And it mer kind of merges these two colors. So it can kind of create a color that we don't have. Uh, you can do this to create shadows or to kind of merge colors if you're limited in colors. And it can kind of create, uh, yeah, just an interesting shadow effect or look. Uh, we can also change the pen size so we can go up to larger if we want to just provide, uh, do this dithering. We can also do it on our background. Maybe we have a sky. Uh, let's go to the paint bucket and we'll change this to a darker blue. We could do dithering on the sky and we can uh, do it with a maybe more of a grayish color here. And so we can create this sort of sky uh, effect up in the sky and create sort of something as we fade. And we can change this color progressively as we go to dither to something else. So we can change the size of our dithering to over here, just like we did earlier. We can do a four by four dither or a two by two dither. So yeah, dithering is a, a good thing to get familiar with. And the last thing I wanna show you is this transform. Uh, over here on the side, we can flip uh, either vertically or horizontally. By default, it'll just be vertical flip, so it mirrors the whole image. If we want to flip on the uh, horizontal axis, we can just hold down the Alt key while we click this. Oh, and it'll, it should flip it. Oh, my Alt key is mapped to something else, but uh, so I have a conflict there. But on Linux, you may have an issue if you're using Linux Mint like me. You may have to remap that key, but you can uh, flip this horizontally as well. We can rotate, so we can do clockwise, and then holding Alt, we can do counterclockwise. So it just rotates the everything around the entire, I think it's, is it the active layer? 
yeah, it's only the active layer, so we're going to get into layers in another video. So this is only, only applies to the active layer, which right now we only have one layer. But if you hold down Control, you can apply it to all the layers. And if you hold down Shift, you can apply it to all frames. And we'll show that in a, in a future video as well. Speaking of multiple frames, if we did have a lot of different frames here, and we wanted to create sort of an animation using this as our base template, uh, we can quickly come over here to Transform and click Clone Current Layer to All Frames. And what that's going to do is just make all the frames have this same uh, picture in it. And then we could make changes to uh, the mouth shape, for example, to sort of create a different type of mouth animation as we go along. Ah, and then it will just change. Uh, what else can we do? Oh, so this one, if we had, uh, what can we do? If, let me do Control Z a lot of times here before I did that whole background blue. Okay, so if we have just our artwork like this and everything else is in transparency, this button here, Align Image to Center, um, is going to just put whatever we have drawn in our pixels to the center of our drawing space, which is 32 by 32 right now. And this one here, Crop the Sprite, will crop it in and it'll actually change the size. So now instead of 32 by 32, we're at a 20 by 19, which is based on the amount of pixels that are only that were actually filled in when we clicked this button. So this will sort of resize our document size to so that it's not unnecessarily large. Because if, if this is your finished uh, sprite, there's no reason to have it be larger unless you needed it to be. But so you can crop it down to size using this. Um, if you can't see that, uh, that last option, there's this plus sign that shows this last option. Depending on how your windows are sized, you can click this plus sign to see more transform options. Well, I hope you found this video informative, guys. Go ahead and uh, leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.